TikTok is cracking down on content related to weight loss drugs. In April, the app updated its community guidelines, barring language or any content promoting, quote, disordered eating or unsafe weight loss habits. Hashtags like Ozempic, ZepBound, or even GLP-1 are no longer allowed, and any video containing them will be immediately taken down. Influencers, some of whom promote weight loss medication and products, are reeling from TikTok's new rules. Content creators who happily shared their journey shedding pounds were in for a shock when their videos disappeared from TikTok overnight. Influencers who earn money from promoting weight loss drugs have been left hung out to dry. Here to share her own experience about how TikTok censored her content is Taylor Hubbler, a 33-year-old Oregon resident. Now, welcome, Taylor. Hi, thank you for having me. So let's get into what happened. Can you tell us how TikTok censored your content and what the deal was with how you were promoting Ozempic or whatever weight loss process you had? Was it of your yeah. own doing or was it a paid ad? Um, so I have been on a GLP-1 journey for the last year, um, sharing my journey and sharing um, how it can help uh, people like me. And I have never gotten a violation or a, a warning ever. And about a month ago, I went to log on and I was completely logged off and permanently banned. Um, no uh, prior um, author, like, telling me that it's going to come or anything like that. It was just out of overnight shock. What did you make of TikTok's policy claiming that promoting weight loss drugs is considered disordered eating or unsafe? It's really sad because I feel like we have, as a community have struggled for so long to find something that works for us. Um, being at the gym for many hours and, you know, counting our calories hasn't always worked. And so finding something that works and now being silenced for it is really sad. Why do you think TikTok made this decision? I know TikTok said all sorts of things about how much it influences young women and girls, but there have been filters that influencers have demonstrated sort of shrink your body. That to me would mess with my body image more than someone talking about their weight loss journey. What do you think went into the decision? Absolutely. I think, um, unfortunately, I think the stigma of people doing it for cosmetic reasons only has taken over. Um, it's been a fad in the celebrity world. I think sometimes that filter alone um, just puts us all in one bubble, even though a lot of us are not even doing it for specific cosmetic reasons. Um, it's helping us from the inside out. I'm able to do so much more things because of this medication. Um, that have nothing to do with my, me cosmetically. So um, it's really sad that a filter that can make me look, you know, completely different is okay, but me t telling someone about um, a medication that actually works is not. Yeah, it's just, it's bizarre to me, you know, how you would think that we would want people to to be healthy, to do things that get them closer to having a healthy relationship right. with their bodies. Um, but TikTok doesn't want people to talk about it. They've they've claimed as well that one of the issues is they don't feel like people who are promoting the drugs have given enough air to their side effects, their potential negative side effects. But I, I guess mm -hmm. my perspective on this, and I'd love to get yours as well, Taylor, yeah. is is that y'all are not doctors. You're not prescribing this drug for anybody. No. Um, so and why no, would, should you all. be required to to talk about every aspect of the medication? Right. And I think also going forward with my um, story and my videos, I've always said this is not medical advice. This is my own journey. Um, anytime I went live and I talked about the GLP-1 community and my journey, I always had like a banner saying this is not medical advice. This is just me um, saying what's worked for me and what has worked for others. I personally haven't had any side effects during this journey. Um, it's not a one size fits all, absolutely, with any medication. I love TikTok so much. Just the interface is one that I agree with. I like posting on it. I like using it. What do you do in this situation? Of course, there's an appeals process. There's like an email you can try and plea to for your right. account back. But what's your plan? Are you moving to other apps like Instagram? Are you seeing the same censorship there? 
So I haven't seen um, any censorship in Facebook or Instagram yet. I have shifted and have put my story more over there than I have on TikTok. Um, because I was permanently banned, um, I have emailed and I have gotten no response. Um, AI has taken over a lot of those communications for customer service, so I haven't gotten a response yet. I, you know, put up my bootstraps and made a new account, and I'm just kind of rebranding and refocusing what um, I put out there as opposed to telling um, certain hashtags. I have shifted those. Have other creators that you're aware of been similarly punished for engaging with this community? Yeah, so I partner with a telehealth um, company called Amble, and a lot of us in those um, in that partnership group have shifted because they have been getting banned on lives or um, have showed their transformation journeys, and um, they've again gotten warnings and everything. I'm not sure why I didn't get any warnings because I would have, you know, adjusted things. But yeah, we are all deeply facing the. Um, the different, uh, what's it called? Um, Terms of service. Sorry, the different guidelines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. And the community guidelines are notoriously vague. I mean, I remember my early content on TikTok. I spoke about CIA intervention. A lot of the documents that my content was based on are in the National History Archives, and some of the content would get flagged for misinformation. It seems that TikTok tends to use their community guidelines loosely so that they apply whenever the content isn't friendly for advertisers or isn't what the parents of children on TikTok who make up a large part of the, the audience there and the users there, that you know if it makes them happy, the advertisers and the younger users, then they're happy to ban the content at their discretion. Are you finding an, an arbitrary use of the community guidelines here or is it more clear now and it was a sudden change? It's still such a gray area. We have, as a community, tried to figure out what is going to be um, the, you know, thing that gets us, and we just can't figure it out. It's very gray. Um, it is not um, a black and white as far as the rules go. I feel like we see a lot of people posting, and they have not had any backlash. And then other people post one thing that might be a transformation video of their journey, and they're immediately. Um, flagged. So it is really hard to, we're all trying to navigate this and it's really, really difficult um, to navigate. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for joining us to talk about what's been happening to you and other creators on TikTok who are yeah. talking about these drugs. And we're going to continue to follow this. Uh, hopefully there's some way you can get your account back, but. Uh, right. We'll be, I'm, I'm yeah. back and I'm trying to, trying to get ahead. So we'll see. It's a whole new rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much again. We'll be back with more Rising after Thank this. Thank you.